Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and the percentage of supply in profit or loss. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out the sale on the premium list, which you can find a link to in the description below or go to intothecryptoverse.com, where you will get access to these on-chain charts that we're talking about, as well as a lot of other charts that you can see here on the sidebar, among a number of other things. You can go to the website, watch the video and you'll get a preview of, of what you'll get. So I wanted to, uh, you know, occasionally we, we go down the on-chain analysis rabbit hole and, and I, I want people to remember that on-chain data can be easily manipulated, right? Easily manipulated. And it, it's sort of like when, you know, just the other day we saw a lot of, a, a huge increase in the amount of, of wallets uh, that are holding at least 1,000 Bitcoin. Just to to do a segue for a brief minute, and then we'll come we'll come right back to this. Just to, to show you what I'm talking about, if you go to say address count statistics and look at say the number of addresses holding at least 1,000 Bitcoin, you can see there was a spike recently. And when there was a spike, you know you basically have all of crypto YouTube and and crypto Twitter talking about it. But upon further investigation. Uh, not done by myself, but other people, other people did the investigating. Uh, they found that it was basically just custodians moving Bitcoin around, and it was not actually representative of you know tons of Russian oligarchs coming in and, and scooping up Bitcoin. So you have to be careful, right? You have to be careful about what you hear, um, and 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 also be careful about what the on-chain data actually means, because again, it can be easily manipulated. Regardless, if we go look at the percentage of supply of Bitcoin in profit, it looks something like this. One of the things you notice is, is that it does tend to bottom out at 40%. Historically, right? If history is any indication uh, of what to expect, it tends to bottom out between, between, say, 40 to 50%. Now, that doesn't mean it always has to go down to those levels, of course, but it is, it has historically meant it's about as good of a buying opportunity that you're really ever gonna get in crypto based on, on, on the past. So if you ever see Bitcoin in, in a position where the, the percentage of profit or the percentage of supply and profit is between 40 and 50%, you should know that that is a historic time to buy Bitcoin. We don't know when it will occur. And frankly, I buy Bitcoin pretty frequently uh, even when we're not at those levels. But what it does show is that if we get to those levels, then historically that is a great time to buy Bitcoin. And you can see that, you know, at the same time, when we, when we sort of see it hanging out at the top for a little while, it's usually just a matter of time before you, before you see it come back down. So I think it's another tool that is at least somewhat useful in, in navigating the cryptoverse. Now, because Bitcoin is down a lot recently, maybe it hits a little bit closer to home and it's a little bit more relatable to talk about the, the supply uh, that's in, in loss. And it looks something like this. Um, and, and you can see that, you know, I mean, it's just the it's just, you know, 100 minus the other one. Um, but I mean, if you, if you think about it, the, the supply and loss, anytime it's more than 50 percent. I mean, it's just a historic time to buy Bitcoin. Even if you even if you started buying Bitcoin over here in 2014 at, at $350, yes, it dropped. You know, yeah, it dropped another 50 percent, right? I mean, okay, fine. But as long as you have the right perspective on the market, it doesn't really matter, you know. And 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 part of the I, I think part of the you know part of the reason I run this channel is is not to encourage day trading. It really is just to provide the larger picture on the market. Um, and, and to recognize that, that day trading is a great way to, to lose money in this market. Now, again, I'm not trying to take away anyone that, that does it. I'm not trying to take anything away from the people that do it. But it's not the purpose of, of this channel, right? It's not the purpose of this channel. The purpose of this channel is just to say, look, guys, cryptocurrency is a great macro investment. Um, it, it, Bitcoin will generally trend up with time. That's what we've seen over, over the last decade. And therefore, I will continue to assume that it will more or less do the same type of thing. It's really hard to predict short-term moves. You know, I mean, we, we, we dubiously speculate quite frequently. Uh, but, you know, it, it's really hit or miss on what happens in the short term. Sometimes you just got to take a step back and, and look at the market for what it is and say, you know what? Bitcoin's now at 43, 44K. If it goes up, great. If it goes down, 
great, right? I mean, it, it, the whole idea is that it, you're just slowly establishing a position. I think the people that are that, that have been around the cryptoverse a, lo a little bit longer kind of just fall into this scenario where they don't really care what happens in the short term. But I, I do think this is interesting. And if you sort of overlay them, you know, when they when they sort of cross at around the 50% threshold, right? So I mean, if they go to 50%, they're going to basically be crossing on here. That's that's really the best time to buy. Okay, so the thinking here is, you know, some people might say, well, does that mean I should wait until we get to that point to buy Bitcoin? I mean, I, I, I can't offer financial advice, of course. I can say that, you know, I mean, if you always waited for something like that to occur, you, you would potentially miss out on, on a rally in the meantime. For instance, back in, in 2013, you can see that the percentage of profit, the, the percentage of supply and profit reached 63%. So if you were waiting for it to go down to 50%, you would have missed out on the second parabolic rally. In the same manner, over here, we just went down to about 61.59% of the supply in profit. So I'm not, I'm not trying to say we have to go one way or another. I think it's silly to be deterministic about anything, except for the fact that Bitcoin should trend up with time. But what we can say is that, you know, over the macro scale, it does make sense that, that to have Bitcoin in a portfolio, of course, not financial advice, um, but that waiting for it to go down to these levels, you know, is not necessarily the best strategy, but when it goes down to those levels is really the time to, to really firm down your positions. All right. So hopefully this makes sense. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. Remember to check out the sale on the premium list at into the I'll see you guys next time. Bye.